Hi, I'm Derek Hilton, and my channel is all about photographing and filming wildlife. Now, what have I got in store for you today? Let's take a look. Well, g'day, and I'm back in my office today to talk about microphones. A road microphone, actually. And what's this nice new t-shirt that I have on? Well, self-explanatory, isn't it? My Rod Reel. Now that's a three minute film competition that I entered earlier this year. And no, I didn't win, unfortunately. But, Rode decided that they'd give everybody that entered that didn't win a present. So in the end, I am a winner. And that turned up on my doorstep with the t-shirt was a totally unexpected present, a video micro. So I wasn't expecting that. And it also came with an extension pole. So like you do with uh, shotgun microphones, have it on the end of a pole, get up close to your, your subject talking, or somebody else can. Uh, but you'll just have to imagine it's there in front of you because I've left it at home and it's a long way to walk back home. So I thought I'd just do it without it. And as I'm going along testing, I'm sure I'll have it tomorrow. So you can have a look at it then. So, here it is. Designed for DSLRs. And I'd love to try it on the XF300 that you're looking at me through right now but it doesn't have the adapter, so I'm going to have to get one sometime to test it out on the XF300. So, let's unbox it anyway, and we'll have a look. Now I'll be mounting this on the uh, 7D Mark II when I start doing my tests, so we'll see how that works with that. So that's what you get in the box plus your warranty card. So we get the little furry dead cat. Hmm, quite thick. It's got the foam in there as well. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna work fantastic with uh, slight breezes and strong winds. That looks like it's well made and everything. It fits on this really well. It's actually a bit hard to get off. Uh, try not to be too rough with it because I can be a bit rough with things. So okay what about the microphone itself? That is really quite weighty for its size. It's not what you'd expect when you uh, see it on the box. It's cast. I'd say the whole thing feels like cast to me. So this is going to be a very sturdy, robust microphone, I'd say. Now the thing to note about these is there's no battery. It goes off the power of your camera. Now the 7D Mark II is very heavy on batteries. So how much will it drain on it? Will it make it go a lot, lot quicker or will it just take a little bit? Who knows? Let's test that and see what it does, but it's quite heavy and uh, very sturdy and strong feeling in the hand. Nice birds singing up there, the grey thrush. Love to hear them. Always uh, lovely to listen to. Now, it's all plastic, the mount. So at first glance, you sort of think, whoa, <laughs> I can break this quite easily. Now, Road, I'm not going to give an, a, an, a biased opinion just because you've given it to me. I'm going to be tough on you because that's what I do. I test things out and I give people a proper review on my personal opinion. And that looks like it would break quite easily. I could break that quite easily. But in saying that, Looks aren't always the truth, are they? Never judge a book by its cover, they say. And that feels quite strong, even though it's plastic. 
Uh, in the bit inside is rubber, very strong, thick, thickish sort of rubber. It's only slightly soft. The base is all plastic. Plastic wheel, plastic base. And that is like pot riveted, some like a pot rivet together. Whether that will start spinning around later on, depends on whether you use these things a lot. I won't be using this a lot, unfortunately, at the minute, until I can get a converter for this to go onto the XF300 with its XL fittings. Uh, so I might get one of those and really try it out. So that's a quick look at it. Well, a long look at it. I have taken a long time. So let's stop talking about it and go and do some testing in the forest where I do all my filming. I do talk to the camera a lot. I have interviewed people. So be good. So let's go. Now I've got myself all set up, ready to go with the 7D Mark II the microphone fitted on the top, ready to go. Now I'm in a secret location where I do a lot of filming of the agile Antichonus, a little carnivorous marsupial that I've been following for quite some years now. Got tons of footage and there's a documentary in the making. But we'll test it out with the agile, see what noises it can pick up. Now the problem I've got with this little fella is, like I said before, doesn't have its own battery, doesn't have any controls with volume, it just left up to the camera whether we use manual, a manual setting or leave it in automatic. Now I'm going to leave it in automatic. Now the problem with DSLRs is that they have a lot of noise. So when things are quiet there's not much happening around the place you get that horrible noise come up, like um, staticky type noise. It rises up and it's not very nice to listen to at all. So I have a little shotgun microphone I bought years ago to use with DSLRs. Different brand of course, not a Rod, Rod mic. It's a uh, my mic. Now that's quite nice little thing, it has its own power supply and its own volume control. So it works really well. So you turn the volume of the camera down, it's audio right down low, to the, almost to the last notch. So we compress its noises down and leave it up to the microphone. It's picking up and its performance. So it did that quite well. So it is a little nerve wracking not having any control over volume. So will this fix all that up? Does it do it itself inside and give great sound? So what I've heard through the headphones so far has been really good. But at the minute I'm waiting for my subject to turn up and I'm hoping that I can hear a lot of noises and it's quite powerful uh, to get your clip to be more dramatic you need all those intricate little sounds so you, when your camera's back you need a microphone that will pick that up now usually use a shotgun microphone that I bought I won't mention the brand <laughs> and I have that place and I've been getting all those beautiful noises but will this do that? Alright, I'm going to sit here a little bit longer and I'll wait for my quarry to turn up. A little agile Antichinus and we'll do some filming with it and we'll see how those results go.
Now that was fantastic, even got the bonus of those couple of birds coming in. Listen to their wings beating as they're flying off. Sounds awesome through the headphones, loving it. Now the Anticinus running across the ground was a little faint, you could just hear them, so it's quite powerful out the front. And if I went out of automatic and into a manual mode, I'd turn the volume right up, I would get those sort of noises a bit stronger, but you bring in everything from outside as well would be a lot, maybe a little bit distracting doing that. But have a play, see how that works. But it was beautiful. Loving what I'm hearing through the headphones. Right, for this test, this is about distances. How strong it is out the front and whether it cancels out things on the side and at the back. So does it act like a shotgun microphone or whether it's just an interview microphone like I'm guessing it is. Now I haven't been online to check out what it is. Now on the box it doesn't tell you what it's designed for except that it's good for DSLRs and blah blah blah. So I'm just going to do a test and just find out for myself. Now, look what I remembered today. This is the boom pole designed especially for our little microphone. Isn't that cute? Now that's a 2.2 metre long boom pole. And uh, I've already done some testing with this, but we'll do... I'll show you those, not do, we'll show you those tests a bit later on and how I've been using it. Alright, let's get started, shall we? Right, I'm two metres away, in front of the camera, and I'm going to keep my voice the same level right through this test. I'm now going to walk to the side of the camera, two metres away, and we'll see just how loud it is at the side here. And I've got a dead cat on, because we've got some wind around on it. I am approximately two metres away at the back. Ha. I'm now at the front. I'm going to move back to about four metres away and we'll see how that goes. So I am roughly four metres away. I'm now going to walk to the side and keep my voice pretty well much the same as I go around. So here we go, walking around four metres away from the camera. I'm at the side now, talking to you the same level, and they're going to walk to the back. Oh, I'm at the back of the camera now, about four metres away. So there you go. And we're now at six metres away. I'm going to walk around, keep my voice exactly the same. Down to the side, to the back. Okay, walking around the side of the camera. I'm right at the side of the camera, about six metres away, looking straight at it. Now I'm going to the back. So I'm walking around to the back of the camera. I'm almost there. And I am at the back of the camera, roughly six metres away. So there you go. Let's just take it a little bit further. I might walk out say 10 metres away and we'll see whether it's picking up my voice. I won't worry about walking around. We'll just see how good it is out the front. So this is about the same level as what I started with in front of the camera and all the way around. So there you go. Well that is a really good test with any microphone you have to see what it can and can't do. Now I've worked out straight away that this is not a shotgun microphone. You can hear pretty well around the sides and at the back, just a little bit lower than you can out the front. But man, is this thing powerful, as you've already heard. 10 metres away. Now I have got the audio of the camera set to automatic. The manual said that we should use manual, but I just thought I'd test it out with automatic, and I'm loving it. It works really well, and it's actually quite a smooth sound. But we'll leave all the talking about what I like about it and whatever to the end. So yes, it's a good interview microphone and I'll be using this on the XF300 because I hate using DSLRs. How about we do a wind test? Because it is breezy at the minute, 
I'm going to take the dead cat off and we'll see how it goes. Well, there you are. got the dead cat in my hand. I've got the XF300 on to show that the microphone is without its dead cat. I can turn that off now. So I've got a little bit of a, a slight breeze. It should be running across. Running across my face. See whether it's um, distorting the microphone and here it's picking up again. Alright, I think that's enough. We'll put this back on. Well that test certainly shows us that we need the dead cat on. That breeze distorts that microphone, something shocking, it sounds horrible. The XF300, you get a breeze run over, it's not too bad. So it can sometimes add a bit of drama to your clip if you're on a cliff, say, overlooking a nice view and you get wind come up, it gives you a sense of being there. But that one has to have the dead cat on all the time. So it works really well. And uh, we'll move on to something else now. What else can we do? Oh yes, the boom pole. Let's go and check it out, shall we? Well, for my first test with the boom pole on the 7D Mark II, I've got a kookaburra nesting in that man-made box, nesting box. It's the babies, I can hear them. They're making some really good noises. So we'll see what this is like down near the bottom of the tree. And then I'll raise it up and hopefully those little babies will do the right thing and keep uh, squawking like they are now. Like that. Alright, let's test it. Hmm, so we have a little bit of a problem there, don't we, with vibration off your hands. Got to be perfectly still, can't move at all. The lead can't move or we're going to get distorted noises like we just got. And that sounded horrible. So handheld. Hmm, you'd have to have a lot of practice. Be very steady with that. I think the way that I'm going to use it is probably shove it in the ground and just let it sit there would be a much better option option for me but probably the best way is so we don't wreck the end of the pole because it has a little plastic cap over the thread that's at the end so you can actually extend it out even more by the looks of it uh, yeah I think I'll make up some sort of a plate some holes in it put some pegs in the ground have the a bolt or whatever so we can screw it into and it can just sit there nicely. Don't have to use the hands and we don't get those distorted noises. So we'll go and test it now, doing it that way. We'll shove it in the ground, go over to where I filmed the antichinus again, and we'll see where they can pick up all those beautiful little noises up close to our subjects. Well, I'm all ready to go now. Got my warriors turned up. Agile Antichinus. So we'll see how the boom goes off the, mark, off the camera and up close. Well, that was an amazing event. I wasn't ready for that. Just as well I had the camera set up properly. So that was fantastic to get two agile anticons aggressively chasing each other I get that occasionally but not like that that was awesome that went on for ages and having the microphone up close gives us all those beautiful sounds the rustling of the leaves as they're running over them and up onto the log beautiful what a great test it sounded really good 
through the headphones. Well, let's hope that's the case when I get back home on the computer. Well, that's it. I've finished testing. I've learned all I need to know about our little video micro. Beautiful. I'm loving it. Now, why am I holding a margarine container? Well, that's where it lives. Fits in there beautifully. Stops it getting damaged when I'm cutting it around in my backpack. And it also stops it from scratching my other gear. So yeah, and that, that's the whole idea of this microphone, isn't it? That it's indiscreet, pack away nicely. Micro. What else can you say? Now, my thoughts on this little microphone. Well, I'm loving it, and I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. And I can sum up its audio in one word, and that is smooth. It is so smooth. Powerful out the front. It picks up a lot of noises around, but they're smooth. They come in very soft and smooth, so they don't, they're not distracting. What's in front, picking up all those nice little noises of uh, whatever, running on the ground, running over leaves, or birds flying. You get those beautiful sounds without the 7D Mark II's crappy audio system, that gain noise coming up, that staticky noise, this held it down, kept it away. It's done the job, it's fantastic. I'm loving it. So, yes, it will be a big part of my armory. Up close to my subjects, I'll be using it a lot. Now what about the boom pile that I actually remembered today? Here it is, very lightweight. Cut it around easy, no, no worries cutting it around, even if you're just going to hold it in your hand, it's very lightweight. They're foam, the holders, um, yeah, you need a lot of practice to, as a boom man, I think, to not get the sounds, the vibrations and everything coming out onto it. The way I'll be using it is probably stuck in the ground or I might make a little shoe that goes in the ground and this can go into. You have got that that comes out, a little protector for the end either goes on to more extensions or fits onto a maybe a freestanding base. Maybe Road have got one of them. So yeah. That's really good. Uh, the only issue that I have is with the backpack. I have my tripod for a lightweight tripod for the XF uh, sorry, 7D Mark II. So they both fit in there no worries. So it's great like that but I don't go anywhere without the XF300 on my shoulder on a tripod and it's hitting that and restricting me so I end up having to carry it in my hand unfortunately but that's a boom pile that's really good you've got, got your clips for a yeah, six meter long uh, cable that came with it so they just clip in there to hold it and stop it twanging around as the wind goes on if you're holding it up handheld which I won't be doing uh, I'm a one man band anyway so I need to be uh, on the camera not holding microphones so I could tape, tape it to a tree or, or shove it in the ground whatever waffling on now, thank you very much Road for this free present loving it it's fantastic been using it a lot on the XF300 up close to my subjects I don't use DSLRs for filming with because they're poor dynamic range and also you don't get tools for uh, focusing in manual mode. So that's enough of me waffling on. Thanks again to Road for that. Loving it. Beautiful. Gave my unbiased opinion of what I think about it. So it's a beautiful little microphone. You've done really well. Now, and you guys out there would like to subscribe to my channel you'll get notification whenever I do anything else so click on the subscription button down there go oh, on I know you want to and if you want to have a look at my channel just down there little cow holding a sign little icon down there click on that take it to my channel have a look at me practicing at making wildlife doc documentaries and the odd camera review now just remember if you don't do you don't get. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife. See ya. Yeah.